Hey everyone, I'm Connor and welcome to my channel, The Closet. If it's your first time here on my channel, I like to talk about all things luxury. So if that's something you're into, I would love it if you could hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you're notified when I bring out new videos. And if you're returning, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I've got a few little errands to run around and do. So I thought I would film my VAT tips and refund process video for you whilst I'm on the move um, and kill two birds with one stone. This um, kind of topic was requested a lot by um, people who had watched my Paris vlogs. If you have not seen the Paris vlogs, I will link down the playlist below. Um, but it is a good question and there were a few little things that did come up that I guess if you didn't know about it might be a bit of a deal breaker for you or it might kind of hinder how it all goes for you so i thought i'll pop everything i know in this video um and hopefully it can help you out if you are planning to travel and claim the vat back when you're in the european union now obviously i will be using france as an example um, and from the perspective of an australian who has visited there recently in france their vat refund is 12 percent the tax I think that they charge on their items, like their goods and services tax is actually 20%, but they're only, or well, the company that processes the refunds for you, Global Blue, they're only willing to give 12% back and the other 8% I guess would cover all of their transaction fees and processing fees, admin fees, whatnot. So 12% is the refund amount you'll get back in France. It may differ slightly. I think Italy and Spain have a little bit higher. It might be 14% with those countries, but with France, it is 12%. Like I mentioned before, Global Blue is the company that does all of the processing and VAT refund kind of middleman work. My first tip would be creating one of their free accounts with Global Blue and downloading their app. I will link all of the details in the description box of where to find it, but it makes it a little bit more streamlined for you when you do have items to refund and when you um, ultimately go to the airport to process the refunds. I'll get to that a little bit later, but my first tip would be to download that and create an account. When it comes to items that are eligible for the VAT refund, I believe the minimum is 170 euros is what you can claim as a base point. Um, but with some shopping centers like Le Bon Marche, you can make up um, the 170 euro collectively on the day. So say you buy a jumper that's 60 euro and a lipstick that's 30 euro, euro or whatnot. As long as the total amounts of items that you've purchased, the minimum is 170 euro, you can then claim the total amount of the 12% from that. If you're buying heaps of stuff, the more the merrier, but the minimum would be 170 euro on the same day, I believe. In order to start that process of claiming the VAT back, you obviously need a passport, which proves that you are not a member of the European Union. My second tip would be to always carry your physical passport with you because some shopping places, some boutiques, they do it a little bit differently and they do require the physical copy of your passport. A prime example would be Chanel and Louis Vuitton. Whatever processing apparatus they use or device, it requires the physical passport to scan. They can't use a photo or a printout copy. It doesn't work apparently. They need the physical, uh, the physical copy of your passport. Some places don't need it. They can use a photo on your phone, like at Dior they could, and at Montclair they could as well. But just to play it safe, I would recommend always taking your physical passport with you. Of course, putting it in a safe spot in your bag, um, obviously don't lose your passport but i would recommend taking the physical copy just in case some places can't use a photo you don't want to be caught short especially if you're buying expensive items that you're in fact in getting the refund for now some boutiques and shopping centers do it a little bit differently but i'll use the uh, the places that i bought stuff from as examples so with dior um, i found the bag that i wanted to buy it cost 1600 euro went up to the like spoke to the sales associate he obviously recognized that i was you know australian or had an accent and he asked me hey are you wanting to claim the vat when you leave france and i said yes absolutely so they he asked for my passport and my email address a little tip would be to on your phone in your notes sections just write a note with your full name and your email address so you can just pass that to them when they're processing these things because otherwise they get you to write it on their phone their keyboards in france were like reverse they don't use qwerty keyboards so i kept hitting all the wrong things it took double the amount of 
the time just to give them my email address. So it's a lot easier just to have it already pre-saved or have it written down on a piece of paper that you can just give to them. From that point, um, he obviously took my passport and processed what they needed to process. I then paid on my card at the full amount, so the 1600 euro amount. And then they give you this kind of like A4 piece of paper folded up in a little form with all of the details of what you've purchased, where you purchased it from, the price, the VAT refund amount, and it's got like a barcode on it. Because I'd already set up a Global Blue account, the piece of paper was redundant, I guess. I didn't need to use it, but I kept it as like a backup in case, you know, whatever went wrong. Because I'd already registered an account with Global Blue, as soon as they had processed that portion of it that they needed to, I got a notification on the app saying, hey, this item you purchased from Dior in Saint Honoré, um, that's been, that's sitting there ready for you to claim when you leave. Here is the amount in euros that you'd be getting back, yada, yada, yada. That's why it's a lot easier with the app because it already kind of pre-fills it all out. It gives you that barcode ready for you to scan and it's all kind of done, just in case you lose the piece of paper or whatnot. If you hadn't already created an account, you get a generic email from Global Blue saying, hey, stranger, um, this email address has been given to us from Dior. Um, there's an unclaimed refund amount waiting for you to process and whatnot. Here it is sort of thing. Um, and you can then create an account from that point, but it's just easier if you've done it all from the beginning. Now, if you're shopping in a shopping center like La Galleria, or Le Bon Marche, they, depending on what part of the shop you shop at, they will do it a little bit differently. In those big department stores, they've obviously got standalone Louis Vuittons and Dior's and stuff like that. If you're going to those high-end luxury brands, they will process the VAT portion for you just like they did at the standalone Dior store. They'll do it for you. If you're going to the concessions, like, you know, all of the other brands that aren't, I guess, got a standalone store within the shopping center and you've got like some jumpers, some lipstick, perfume, whatever. Um, you just keep all of your individual receipts from that and then there'll be a dedicated level on that in that shopping center that will process it all for you collectively. At Le Bon Marche, I think it's on the very top level, level three, they've got a VAT counter where you would then give all of your receipts and they'll process it all at once for you. Um, there's lots of signs in the shopping centers that say VAT claims or refund uh, tax refund claims this way so it's hard to miss um, but they will do it after the fact for you collectively with all the receipts from the purchases that you've made. So with the sales associate at Dior whilst he was processing the VAT portion for me he asked would I want the refund back on my card or in cash? If you choose to have it to go back on your card it doesn't necessarily need to be the card that you're paying on they will also ask do you want it to go back on this card or another card? The card refund amount is 12%. So say you pay on your credit card or your debit card, you will then get the 12% back onto that card once you process it when you leave the country. If you choose cash, however, it is a 10% cash refund. I don't know why you would wanna get it back as cash. Cash is annoying as shit and you'd probably get coins and stuff back. I would rather it back as cash on my card then I don't need to worry about it. But different strokes for different folks, you do you, but that's how it goes down. Obviously, I'd opted always for it to go back on my card and the same card that I'd paid on. So now that you've you know done all your shopping, you've got all your refund claims ready to go, the next step would be leaving that country and processing it all at the airport. Now to do this last stage, this is up to you to do, it's on you, and if you don't do it, you won't get any of the refunds. I would suggest at the very least arriving at the airport at least with I don't know, three hours before your flight back home. You might think that's ridiculous, but it took a little bit of time to get through, especially because I had no idea what I was doing or where I was going. And I wanted to, you know, not get stuck in a queue waiting for the refund processing and then miss my flight or something like that. When I got to the airport, you need to check in first to your flight and have a boarding pass. The boarding pass proves that you're actually leaving. You're not just rocking up at the airport wanting to claim stuff. Just having your passport that isn't in the EU isn't enough. You need to have the boarding pass. But the items that you're wanting to claim have to be with you. So if you do have items that you're wanting to claim and you're wanting to put them in your checked luggage, you need to check in, get the boarding pass first, but not check your bag onto the flight. 
once you've got the boarding pass, you need to go downstairs. Um, this was at Charles de Gord as an example. You go downstairs from where you would originally have walked in and then checked in to get your boarding pass. Once you go downstairs, you will see signs that say tax refund kiosks or self-serve tax refund or all of that stuff. When I got down there, I saw that there was a bit of a line and I thought, oh, this won't take that long. It was, you know, I think I've actually got a video of it. So if I can find that video, I'll put it in here. And I thought this won't take that long. There wasn't that many people, yada, yada, yada. It took about 45 minutes just to get through the line. Um, which I had allowed for that time, so I wasn't mad about it. But if you were really quite pressed for time, it could be the difference between you missing your flight and not getting the tax refund or whatever. So definitely allow some time, especially if you're going in like summer when it's like high tourism and there's people everywhere, definitely allow yourself some time. So once I got through the line, because I was receiving my refunds back on my card, I went to the little self-serve kiosks. And because I had the Global Blue app, on there I had all of my purchases with a barcode ready to individually scan. You basically go up to the kiosk, select the language that you speak, so obviously I um, selected English, and then you start scanning your barcodes. Um, once you scan your barcode, a green tick will pop up saying that it's accepted it, and then all of your items will be listed there. There are chances though that the items that you're choosing to refund for whatever reason need to be physically inspected by customs and there is a counter at the opposite end of the kiosk section. I would say that things that would trigger this would be maybe exotic items or high value items, jewelry, stuff like that, and they want to physically inspect it. For me, none of that happened. I guess mine were all very low value items in the grand scheme of things and mine were all fine for me to process self-serving. I did see a lot of people though, a red X would come up on the screen and it would say, please proceed to the customs counter where they will physically inspect your items. This is why you want to make sure you have not put your items in your checked luggage and then check them onto the flight before you've done the VAT processing because if they need to physically inspect the item and you've already put it on the plane, well, that ain't happening and you're not getting your refund. So I guess that's why they do it. But for me, that did not happen. De then on the screen, it is quite not misleading, but it could easily be done incorrectly. It'll say, if you are wanting to process your refunds as cash, click the bottom right corner and it's got like a tick with a little dollar sign. I instinctively went to go and press that because I thought, oh, it's green, it means green means go, like, yep, yeah, cool, I'm finished doing it. If you press that, it will automatically say, yep, yeah, cool, you're all good, but it basically means you're all good to go to the cash counter and then get your cash back and process it that way. Doesn't mean, you know, it's all good, it's going back on your card. On the bottom left corner, I'm pretty sure that's where it says you're all finished and you're ready for it to get processed back on your card. You're all hunky-dory. So I nearly did it incorrectly. Lucky I double checked and I took a photo of the screen on my phone after I was done because you don't get a receipt printout, you don't get anything. It's basically just done. So it basically had all of the items all of the lines of the items of stuff that I was wanting to claim it had a green tick. I pressed the bottom left corner and then it said, yep, cool, you're all good, nothing else for you to do. Then on the Global Blue app, it still said that my items were still waiting to be claimed, as in it was still waiting for me to go to a kiosk and claim them. And I thought, have I done this wrong? Like, shouldn't it have updated? But it's all good, there is a delay in that. As long as you've processed everything at the kiosk, it's given you the green tick and said, there's nothing else for you to do. Have a great day, smiley face, you're in the clear. When I left Paris and then 13 hours later arrived in Singapore, at that point when I turned my phone on, the app had updated and it said, yep, yeah, all your items are ready to go, expect the refund soon. From the point of me having confirmation that the refund was on its way to when the refund actually landed in my account was probably about, I don't know, maybe 48 hours or three days. It didn't take very long at all, but it does say it can take up to 30 days or a month or something for it to actually come in. I'm assuming when it's they're at peak, it would take longer for them to process, but for me, it didn't take long at all. The amounts um, matched the estimate that it said I would be getting back and it all just went straight into my account. No dramas whatsoever. So it was a quite a simple, like straightforward process now that I've done it. 
um, but I was a little bit confused at first because I just obviously didn't want to do the wrong thing or do it incorrectly because then once you're back in your home country there's not a lot you can do about it so I think the main kind of takeaways from it would be allow yourself enough time at the airport make sure you have the items with you make sure you have your boarding pass and not have checked in your luggage in case you have items in there that they want to inspect and make sure you just read the screen carefully and don't hit the cash section versus the card section or you know however you're choosing to do it make sure you do it the correct way um and yeah that they're my kind of tips that i would give in that instance now i did get lots of questions about people asking how good the how good the prices were of items and you know were the savings great and everything like that look my advice would be first of all if you're going on a holiday exclusively to get cheaper luxury items or um, do a lot of shopping and stuff like that probably the wrong intention for wanting to go on a holiday in the first place um, my intention obviously was never to do any of that it was to go on a holiday and see different parts of a country and the shopping was always just a bonus you know I love luxury and all of that stuff but that was never my sole focus of going on the holiday um, but secondly it all really depends on what your currency in your home country is doing at that time where you would probably reap the most benefit of the savings. Now, don't get me wrong, I, the items I did purchase, I did save money. I wouldn't have been able to purchase them in Australia for that cost or even close to that cost, but I wouldn't say the savings blew me out of the water. For example, with my Dior bag, the, um, the retail once the conversion had carried over was a hundred dollars less like the retail for the bag in australia was 2700 the euro pricing converted into australian dollars was 2600 so before the tax back i guess it was basically like for like and then i got the 12 percent back off that so if you're just going off like for like with dior it wasn't amazing it was basically the same i know hermes their retail for retail with the conversion is a little bit better but it all just depends on the brand and what your currency is doing at the time the Australian dollar was absolutely terrible and you know the savings just retail for retail weren't there some other places like Fendi it was a little bit better but it really all just depends on lots of different factors the brand exchange rates and all of those things so I wouldn't bank on going over there and making an absolute killing in savings it really is case by case and you know if Venus and Mars are bloody aligned apparently but that's what I found I do see a lot of videos saying oh my god go to Europe the savings are amazing and yada 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 and yeah they were good but I wouldn't say they were like breathtakingly amazing so thanks so much guys for requesting this video. I hope it does answer some of the questions you have and outlines the process a little bit better. If there is anything you want to know the answer to, if you think I've missed something, please do pop it in the comments down below. Hopefully Meredith, this will satisfy you because I know you were bloody eager beaver to see this video. So hopefully this simplifies it for you. But thanks so much guys for watching and I hope to see you all very soon in my next video.